Thank you for joining us. My name is Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we look at topics of interest to the Tri-Cities. And we would like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for making these interviews possible. I'd also like to acknowledge that our interviews are taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of Coquitlam First Nations. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So this afternoon, we're joined by Jamie Watson, who is taking a run for Port Coquitlam City Council. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Jackie. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I was wondering if maybe for people who maybe don't know you, if you could give us a little bit of a background about who you are and um, why you decided to run for Port Coquitlam City Council. Well, I'm originally from Ontario and I uh, was diagnosed with a hearing disability um, as a small child. And so in order to teach me to speak and mainstream me into public school, we had to move to BC uh, because at that time was the only school district that was mainstreaming hard of hearing children. So that was almost 40 years ago. Ah. So we ended up out here. So that's been an interesting journey being a hard of hearing child and what accessibility means. And so over the years, continued to live in Tri-Cities and got involved in the community through actually the school garden, Lakeburn oh, School Garden. Oh, school garden. garden. Yes. Okay. So that's yeah. actually where it all began was uh, a habitat garden that we had at Lakeburn, a bee bird butterfly garden. And so that's what started everything in the process and um, giving back to the community. And it was actually an interesting story. It was a woman who had cancer mm -hmm. who would lay in the garden every day uh, to try and heal. So just some therapy. Therapy, mm -hmm. right? And uh, that had such an impact on me, realizing that we needed to create more spaces for the public. And uh, it was such a joy to see nothing to eight hummingbirds. Wow. And also it was interesting the impact it had on the kids at the school to have a space for the teachers to teach and be outside. So that's really where I started getting involved. And it sounds like a really nice beginning because there's so many positives oh, that absolutely. have come out of that already. Yeah. Now, you took a run last term, mm -hmm. I believe, for yeah. city council. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things have changed <laughs> since then and now. Can mm -hmm. you tell us for you, mm -hmm. um, running, what's changed? What changes have you seen in Port Coquitlam? Well, it's interesting. For the first time I ran was actually, was I didn't have a very good time. Um, people were very aggressive. Believe okay. it or not, I had a lot of harassment and so a lot of resistance. Um, and uh, from who? Like, where was this resistance? Uh, from men. Oh. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of terrible incidences that took place. Actually, there was, uh, it was not a, a, a good time. It's so disappointing. Yeah, it was. That. It's like, what, what mm. time do we live in, really? So, mm. um, this time it's been completely different. Really? Yeah. So, why do you think I, that well, is? I'm working with a younger generation now. Okay. You know, and uh, the pandemic, what it did to mm -hmm. the people around me, um, it changed us, right? Because we, yes. I work for Costco, right? And I've been there for 24 years. We were frontline workers. Right. During the pandemic, it changed all of us and what it means to work as a team, what it means to collaborate, and uh, what it means to embrace new ideas in a situation such as that is right. an emergency and people are stressed people are stressed and yeah. uh you had it really made a lot of us closer and so the um the reaction people are having now is completely different from the first time so it's mm. been great actually that's really good to hear yeah. i wasn't expecting to hear that oh no, i know right? um but yeah no that's great yeah and can you tell me what will you bring to city council like I, it's important to have diversity, okay. as we know, on, on City Council. How will you contribute to the diversity on City Council? What do you bring that's not already there? Well, first of all, my hearing loss, living with a disability. Um, there's so much that people don't understand right. what it means to have a disability. And there's just not enough of uh, disabled voices in, in politics. And so I feel that our unique perspective mm -hmm. and outlook on things could bring an interesting element to the table. Right. I think 
I think you're right. There's a voice there that's missing, mm -hmm. and it's not just for the hard of hearing. No. It's for a, a much broader spectrum of people out there that you could potentially be speaking for. And I do feel people with disabilities come to me, and they talk to me about it because there's a common ground there. Right? They feel safe yeah, and absolutely. comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether the sidewalks are not safe, right? right? Whether there's a lack of social, you know. So having that, I feel, will make a whole part of our community feel comfortable in talking to someone who can relate. And possibly some voices that we're not hearing at the community table. And show that to yeah. the younger generation that this is possible. Right, you right. Know, right. And uh, yeah, just to be the face and the voice, you know, that we mm -hmm. can do it. Now, you um, have been engaged in the community. You've mm -hmm. told us about some things that you've done, and, and you've been very active, mm -hmm. um, taken an active role in a few different things, and we'll cover some more as we go along. Um, you were part of the Mayor's Roundtable, mm -hmm. um, and I believe you're not on it now. No. But I was wondering if you could maybe share some of that experience with us. What does the Mayor's Roundtable do? Well, it was, it was interesting. It was a diverse group of people from all kinds of backgrounds uh, just sharing their input mm -hmm. on what diversity, inclusion, and equality means and everybody putting forth ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I struggled with it and um, unfortunately at that time it was during Zoom. Okay, that is a challenge right? of its own, I guess. Yes. yes, and so unfortunately with Zoom, I can't quite, the caption mm -hmm. isn't uh, fast, or if you don't speak properly or you're not clear, right. the Zoom doesn't work properly. So I was very isolated in that sense that I couldn't commit, com like, communicate or right. understand Understandable. what was going on. Yeah. So um, at one point they were fantastic about it and they're very understanding. Mm -hmm. but that, and then they would let me go into a boardroom. This is even during everything that was going on. Right. And uh, watch from a big screen. But at that point I was already so lost. I was already so behind. It's a challenge for sure. And I think, you know, even at the best of times, mm -hmm. communicating via Zoom was not ideal for a lot of people, but um, to have those extra challenges on top of that. Um, and I don't look at it in a negative way. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of funny in a sense, you know, being a hard of hearing person and mm -hmm. you can't participate on the equality, diversity, inclusion. Well, it's <laughs> ironic. It is ironic, right? It, it, so, so I do make light of it. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I understand that as time goes on, right. we will be able to all be together and have meetings in person. So for that um, round table, mm -hmm. what sorts of things did you accomplish and well, what only, came out yeah, of it? The only thing I accomplished was my ideas in the beginning. I had three ideas and I was very passionate about, okay. but I never really got a chance to talk about them. I never, it's uh, pretty well the ideas that got me on the committee to begin with. Right. Because you had to apply for it. Right. right. Oh, right. So I never got to explore those ideas or talk about those ideas, which is something that I'm hoping to do if I get on council. Can you tell us just very briefly sure, what those absolutely. three ideas very were? Very briefly. Um, I'm very passionate about um, film and I would love to see the youth be engaged in a film festival at oh. Terry Fox Theatre. And it'd be one of those film festivals where it's shorts. Yes. And there could be interesting topics and, you know, accessibility could be the topic of the year. Inclusion could be, and the kids mm -hmm. have a competition right. every year on what's the important, you know, um, conversation of the year. So that was one. Uh, another one was Culture Day. I, I do passionately love all other cultures, music, foods right. and arts. Not everybody can travel. So it would be amazing to shut down the streets of Poco and have different cultures represent themselves and have a passport for kids. Right. And the okay. kids go to each culture and get a passport and there's a prize at the end. But that way, because racism is prevalent. And well, and I think it's a way to learn about different cultures in a very positive mm -hmm. light. And I think once you learn about them, you become more open and Absolutely. yeah, you know, and so um, and there's such beauty in each one. Mm -hmm. And so and, and through art and food and music, you know, it's, yes. it's, it's to me a different way to combat racism, kind of a way to reach out to people that yeah, everybody eats yeah. and everybody, you know, it's likes fun. To have fun. It's, it brings the kids, you know, yeah. yeah. So that was a big yeah. one for me. Um, 
So those are the three things that you... There was a two. There's a third. Okay. I can't remember off the top of my head. But those were the two that I were really focused so on. So you've got the film festival, the culture day, yeah. and then one other one I that you're going to keep secret from us for a little while. We'll have to wait. I'd have to look at my notes. <laughs> okay, we'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that you've been... I think you're one of the very few people speaking out of about the importance of this is food security. When we talk about food security at a local level, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? What would you like to see? Well, you, we have those 580 something acres here in Poco. And over the years, I've heard farmers are struggling and you know, there's the poor soil, there's right. the port, I mean, they're right by the river. So they need us to help them. Right? How can and we, we need them? <laughs> we do. Right? You know, we don't it's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> so there's such potential in, in local food, but also agritourism. Have you ever been I'm to like Krauss, yeah, Krauss yes. Farms? Like yes, all the that. berry farm. And yeah, so yeah. they are busting by the seams with businesses. Oh, or the pumpkin patch. Yeah, or, yeah. Like so there's, there's just there's just so much out there that we can mm. learn from to help the local farmers. And there's a ton of grants out there. Like I just, I wanna be a voice and a person that can listen to them and help them whatever way and just move POCO where it needs to be and protect those 580 acres that we have left. So Metro Vancouver actually slotted those specifically for farmland. Oh, yeah. okay. So are they've we actually been labeled. So to get them out of farm will be very difficult. Out for, of the agricultural for, yeah, land reserve. Absolutely. Are we seeing an erosion of them? I don't, or are they pretty, like, is it, it's difficult to take them out of the AOR? It AR. is, and it was the recent um, Metro Vancouver 2050 plan that they talked about that is mm -hmm. pretty well set for that. So it's very, right. the process is very difficult. Right. But so it's how I know we it's a battle them. between real yeah. uh, uh, developers and uh, farmers. So right. I'm no stranger to the to battle. So I'm not going to shy away nope, from that. Not at all. No. So what can you do as a city councillor? Mm -hmm. You had talked about there's grants to apply for mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. How can you support? our farmers, our local farmers, as a city councillor or from a municipal level? Well, you go to the feds, you go to Metro Vancouver. You so you're go, talking about reaching out to partners? Yes. Or reaching out to yes. different so you levels? you have roundtables, you have mm -hmm. oh, town halls. I think if we can get the community to support it, right, yes. support them, and and then reach out to all different levels of government. So Right. So, so are you... It sounds like you're supportive of town halls and oh, absolutely. public engagement. Absolutely, without do you, question. Do you think there's enough public engagement, no. um, enough sort of bringing people in and, and public consultation right now? Well, if you want to touch on the reconciliation work that I did, they were supposed to, there was a, supposed to be a town hall with my work. Can you tell us, yeah, uh, just give us a little bit of a that. background yeah, on so, what that work was? So. Um, I pursued reconciliation for the women who died on the Pitchin property. It was a long process. We started at the uh, Blakeburn Lagoon, then we went right. over to the property. And, and is this with the city? You did with this? the city, with okay. the province, with um, with families, with, it was, I had a committee at the time. So we just reached out to any, any MLA that would listen to us. We were talking with the Parks Department. We were talking with the mayor. How are we going to get this done? Mm -hmm. And so throughout the the whole process it was all oh, this is a problem so we would go to a different person and come up with a different solution so right. went from the lagoon back to the property then back over to the lagoon then we got the grants for the lagoon and that you got the all grants. Felt, well that was put the parks department were supportive of the lagoon at oh, the time okay. right right there was nothing there at that and time parks department of port coquitlam, port coquitlam. okay yes yeah, so there were many meetings on where could we find a spot for a garden for the women. Right. That's how it all began. Okay. Because of that woman in the school garden who had cancer and how much it healed her, I thought with the women who died, I thought the most appropriate way would to be give them a healing garden. A healing garden is a wonderful idea. That's yes. That's how it started. I just wanted a garden for the women. Right. And so some of the family members I spoke to were quite positive about it. Some weren't. It was a contentious mm -hmm subject. Right. So the very end, the, the province, the, the feds and the city applied for the grants for the lagoon. It went through. We spoke with landscape architects to have my bench right. for the women. 
And in the end, they had a town hall. Well, it wasn't a town hall. It was, oh, so there never was a town hall? No. Okay. It was the, you come in and see the plans of the lagoon. Oh, all right. So it I wasn't... I had a speech plan. Right. I wanted to engage with the community, tell them what it is that I wanted to do. So it was more of an info session. It was an it's info not session. A... I remember walking into the gym of Lakeburn and being stunned. Oh, okay. So they I caught thought, you off guard. Oh, they did. Yeah, oh. absolutely. So... It was an info session. It wasn't a town hall. Right. And so I've been to town halls in the past. We've, we've yes. had them, right? So, yes. So that was a bit of a shock. And mm. uh, so then they had the votes whether they actually held a survey with the city, uh, with everybody in the community, whether this was supposed to be a reconciliation bench. The favor was for a reconciliation bench. Right. And uh, then they had an in-camera meeting to decide whether it was going to be, and they voted against it. The bench is there. The landscape architect and I sat down and discussed what it was going to look like. Right. But they voted against it. So okay. You've just brought a couple of other issues up. Um, first of all, I want to say, you know, thank you for doing your work that you've done there. Mm -hmm. And I ran into you just a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. at a, an Indigenous-led reconciliation mm -hmm. event. Yeah. So right now there is a cedar heart mm -hmm. that has been placed in Lakeburn Lagoons behind the bench that you worked so hard to get. Mm -hmm. So it's still happening, but just not the way that quite there you thought. We're not no. quite there yet. No. Yes. The issue that I want to kind of move on to a little bit now is you were saying that the decision was made about the future of this bench behind in a closed meeting mm -hmm. in an in-camera meeting mm -hmm. do you feel that there's too much going on behind closed doors like do we I don't agree with in-camera meetings it's they are working for us mm -hmm. the community we elect them we should know what's going on because in right. the next election, we need to know where they stand. So now I don't know in that in-camera meeting who stands for reconciliation and who doesn't. And I think there are certain times, very specific reasons why something would go into closed if there's personal information. Sure. But there are parameters around that. Mm -hmm. um, so as a city councillor, mm -hmm. would you be... Um, encouraging sort of more compliance with going, or we don't know if it's compliant or not yeah, because yeah, we don't no, know what's no, happening. We don't know. Um, would you encourage compliance with um, the community charter that things go into close only when they reach those parameters that are laid out in the community charter? That's something I would have to look into. I would just be speaking out against in camera meetings in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. and whether I'm, I don't have enough information of why they're there. That's the other key. Why do yeah. they even have them? What's, yeah. Right? I, I, so what's the process? For, you know, and, and so that's the thing about a problem is I have the ability to look at all sides and mm -hmm. figure out, okay, so why is this working and why isn't? And yeah. that's how I would tackle it. So when is it necessary and when isn't it? And right. Me, the, whether a bench is approved to reconcile. Like, why would that be? Why would that be an in-camera? So I think there are specific reasons specific. why. So you yeah. could go and look at those parameters exactly. and say, this yeah. does or doesn't yes, meet the standards. Absolutely. So is I that... need to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that's one of the things I'm interested in. But something to be aware of, I absolutely. think, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, now, can you tell me, like, we're talking a little bit about public information and mm -hmm. public engagement. Mm -hmm. Whose voices are missing at the table. You said mm -hmm. um, somewhere in your platform that there are community groups that should be at the table and that should be represented and they're not. Can you give some examples of, of what you're talking or referring to? Well, I think lower income families, mm -hmm. right? Single moms. Um, there are a lot of people that I come across in my job that have zero interest in politics because right. it's a world that they don't belong in. It's a world that's no voice of theirs in, and there's no empathy they feel in their situation. There are a lot of very jaded people when it comes to politics, and I come across that in my right. work environment. You know, when you only have a 28% voter turnout, I know. that tells you a lot of who so is So why? There. Why are people so jaded? and well, think distrustful. About it. You've got the banners, you've got the suits, you've got the glitz and the glam, mm -hmm. right? And you've got people who are out of touch with what's really going on. I just heard a story the other day of a family that is, has a one-bedroom apartment where the two girls live in the bedroom right. and the parents live in the living room. 
That's a normal story I come across, yeah. right? So I don't think politics in general, there are a lot of people who are in politics that experience those kind of living conditions. Well, you bring up a really good point. Like, as far as um, people on council, they're well established. They are. They're not facing those barriers or those challenges necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. So to bring that empathy and, you know, maybe some lived experiences Absolutely. and a willingness to reach out and engage mm -hmm. those people who aren't being heard is, is a super valuable yeah, role I, to be playing. I've lived paycheck to paycheck. I've lived mm. as a single mom. I, you know, I understand what worrying about how food is going to be paid for. Right. High rent is just insane in this city. So, yeah, I understand where they're coming from. And so, what can we do as a municipality mm -hmm. as far as affordable housing? It's an issue everywhere right mm -hmm. now. Um, what role can the municipality pay, play to kind of help ensure that everybody has a home? Well, you know, there's that whole contention of low-income housing, right? right? We need, there, there are some beautiful rentals in the city, but no one can afford right. a $2,300 a month two-bedroom apartment. It's a mortgage payment. Sure. No, that's a yeah. rental. I know, but I mean, you could You know be, what I mean? Like, yeah. That's a rental. It shouldn't be a rental. They're beautiful. Yes. Fantastic. But who can afford that? You yes. Know? Um, so Coquitlam recently has uh, started a project on Burke Mountain where they're building a bunch of townhomes. And you have to apply for it. Oh, right. And you have to be within a certain income. Mm -hmm. And you can actually own your own home. That's the thing. So you're renting to own? Is no, that you're what just, you're saying? You've applied to, to purchase a home in oh, this townhouse right. complex on Burke Mountain. And that's something you'd like Absolutely. to see brought to Coquitlam? Absolutely. Everybody deserves to not just have a roof over their head, but one that right. they call their own. Well, it, it's a matter of dignity as it well, is. and everybody deserves a home, right? Absolutely. Then there's then you care more about your community, you mm -hmm. care about your space, you, right. you care, you know, and it just you, you're secure. I think security is everything. I think you're right. Not having your home taken away from you at a moment's notice because a landlord has decided to, to, to sell it at last minute to, to capitalize on the market. Right. You know, so uh, or dealing with, you know, yeah. So that's a big one is being able to own your own home. And that's a vision you would like Absolutely. to Absolutely. So pursue. we would learn from Coquitlam. What have they done? Mm -hmm. Like, what steps are they taking, right, to, to do that? So it's to already reach being done. That's the exciting part. Yeah, so. and look at what other communities are they, doing oh, to absolutely. grapple with that and build on that and mm -hmm. learn from that. Absolutely. Okay, I have another question. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I'm going to no, pivot no, again. No, absolutely. Because yeah, it's great. We have so much to cover, I <laughs> right? Um, I want to talk a little bit about environment and climate change. Yes. Um, are we doing enough in Port Coquitlam to deal with the effects of climate change? Well, it's funny with climate change, I'm very passionate about renewable energy. Oh, okay. That plays it's into a the... Big deal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've read the climate change, the Port Coquitlam. It yeah. looks great. You know, it looks wonderful. All right. But when you get into it and are behind the scenes, is it really that... Wonderful, I don't know. So, but I'm really, so there's a lot of innovations out there mm -hmm. that we don't have here, we don't have in the Lower Mainland, that um, there's an example, industrial parks that have solar panels on their roof and provide. But why can't we have that here? Well, that's what I want to find out. I want that, right? Mm. So in Surrey, they have a biofuel plant that takes organic waste and turns it into RNG. It's the uh, biggest one in North America. So, right? It's bring it fantastic. home. So, eight hours, <laughs> mm -hmm. 850 cars for an entire year. Wow. So, it's not as sustainable as wind or solar. Right. But it's a way to transition. So, it's basically green waste mm -hmm. being turned into fuel. And it's a plant right beside the Surrey transfer station. So, it's one more yeah. way that we yeah, have I think that we can move on. 60% less emissions than right. diesel or gas. And so they're using their trucks, their garbage trucks and their pickup so the trucks are using So the city that. trucks are running off yeah. of this. Oh, okay. And so it was supported There's by some... the federal government and Metro Vancouver. They mm -hmm. got $60 million to build it. 
and it's fantastic. I just stumbled upon that. But see, that's the other thing with climate change, and I've noticed with the youth and everyone around me, right. there's such climate anxiety. And yes. we need to change the narrative. We're talking so much about what we're not doing. Right. We need to start talking about what we can do. And what, what yes. we, sh we could be doing. And so, so, like, you've never heard of Surrey Bio. Have you heard of that? I've heard of it, but I didn't realize that they were running their trucks yeah. off of it. So yeah. there's just and so I'm not much, that familiar yeah, with but it. But there's to be so honest. much going on out there yeah. that mm. people aren't seeing or understanding. And I feel that if we talk more about the things that we are doing, right. anxiety about climate will drop significantly as opposed to everything we can't do. Good point. Um, I think you've mentioned Coquitlam showing leadership in mm -hmm. housing. You've talked about Surrey mm -hmm. showing leadership mm -hmm. um, in the biofuel plant. Where is Port Coquitlam showing leadership? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Where so would you would, like I'm to so see I'm so busy it. looking at other cities. Saanich right now is giving people $12,000 to transfer their heat pumps from natural gas to... Uh, electric. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm so busy looking at what we can be doing. Right. So, preparing that, for yeah, yes. the next chapter. Yes. So, one of the things I've learned at Costco is that a manager comes in, he's quiet for a while, he yes. learns, he's listening, he sees, <laughs> he listens, and he and and then then they start to implement things. Right. Okay. So it sounds like you've been doing a lot of research. I have. Yeah. Um, so with respect to climate change, mm -hmm. you're saying that we should focus on things that we can do and the positives. What are, besides what we've talked about with Surrey mm -hmm. and renewable energy and, and looking into that, which is really an important mm -hmm. component of it, what are some things that we can do as residents or is, what role can the city play in encouraging people to take action well, as well? You know, having the SkyTrain come would be a big one. Densification in Port Coquitlam, walkability is a big one. Right. Bike lanes is a big one. You know, um, it's about our lifestyle choices and our accessibility to fast transit. Right? Those are the right. things that we can do. Choosing local, supporting local businesses. Food security. Food security. <laughs> yes. Right. So, mm. you know, know um, the things like uh, less waste it's, it's right. but it's not just about that it's also what can bigger businesses do yes everybody I has feel a role. like we put yeah. it so much on people All what right. are corporations and businesses doing what mm -hmm. can they do to be better right and I would like to explore that as well you know so um, are they giving away used food? Are they throwing stuff in the garbage that shouldn't be thrown away? What are they right. wasting? What can we do to support them? So as far as doing things to support them, you mean having programs in place yeah. or mm -hmm. maybe some kind of subsidy yes. or something to encourage? I do see Costco. We give away our bakery, you know, that share. Or I'm not sure who comes, but, you know, we do donate right. to local charities. Right. I'm just curious what everybody else is doing. So it's not just community members, but it's our business. It's everybody. It's everybody. It's yeah. a team thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's one other thing that I want to touch base on here. And I think you, it's kind of woven throughout some of the things you've said already. Okay. It's a respectful workplace. Okay. So how... Will you ensure, if you're on council, mm -hmm. that it's an inclusive and safe space and that it's respectful mm -hmm. and that everybody has the opportunity to be heard mm -hmm. in a respectful way? Um, well, coming from 24 years at Costco, I've learned so much about what it takes to work with a multitude of people. Right. And the success that we have when we work together is so important to me. I do have that ability to um, talk to people and find out if they have an issue. Right. Let's get to the bottom of it and how can we figure it out? Right? To kind of working how together. Can we work through it. Okay. You know, you're useless by yourself. And so, so I play soccer and I don't score goals at all if my team isn't helping me. Well, that's a good analogy. It really is. Mm -hmm. And when they want me to do well, I do well. Right. And I literally apply that in everything. I'm only as good as those around me. Right. So Now, there is um, some work being done looking at uh, possibly 
having some provincial oversight over the municipal level. Mm -hmm. So to have like an ethics commissioner okay. or somebody mm -hmm. who can come in, step in when things get really contentious mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to be solved around the um, council table, mm -hmm. just to have that sort of cool-minded mm -hmm. third party come absolutely. in and, and help and provide some support. Is that something that you oh, would absolutely. be in favor of? Absolutely. Okay. See, in, in my workplace, there's always that manager that's like that. Right, somebody who can... Somebody who is ne yeah. neutral, knows how to manage, and just right. sort of stays impartial. And uh, I actually feel safer mm. that way. So. Yes, absolutely. Well, and it takes the heat off, sort it does, of. And, absolutely. And, and the goal it's like is... like a mediator, in a sense, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the goal is to move forward, move right? Move forward, yeah. yeah so. Well, Jamie, I would like to thank you so much thank for, for coming in. It's it was great. <laughs> awesome to talk to you. And I'm going to wish you all the best in your campaign. Thank you. And I hope that we can talk again in the I future. I hope so, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us. We've been talking to Jamie Watson and um, talking about her run for Port Coquitlam. City Council.